Let's worship him for being on time. Oh, hallelujah, for moving, for touching, for healing, for making a way. Oh, how providing. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for moving in my life. Oh, for ministering to my heart, my mind. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to get into the word of the Lord. Be so kind to, to stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Honor the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Miss those who are unable to be here today. I pray God would bless them. There's a few that are out sick and some that are in family's company. Praise the Lord. We pray for them. God would watch over and protect them and bless. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to take our text from 2 Samuel chapter 15. In verse 25, 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 25. Praise the Lord. And uh, the king here in this story is David. So I'm just going to say his name. David said unto Zadok, Carry back the ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. Praise the Lord. Amen. When there aren't any answers to my questions, where where can I go? Have you ever had that? When there is all kinds of pain and it seems to be overwhelming, where... Where am I going to go? When the way seems rough and everything's come against me, where where am I going to go? I'm going to go to the Lord, but on my way there, I'm I'm going to make sure that He is first in my life. Placing God first will allow me to have the answers in due time. Will allow me to walk in those rough periods of my life putting God first, making sure that he's first in my life. I'll I'll finally have the answer that I need and that overwhelming pain that I feel uh, will be subsided. Why? Because I'm making sure when I put the Lord first, hallelujah. I just want to bring to your um, uh, thought here today, your your, uh, hearing, finding favor in the eyes of the Lord, finding favor in the eyes of the Lord. And I find it ironic, and we'll go through this in a little bit, that David would look at the priest and going through all amounts of chaos in this uh, time period of his life. He always wanted to be in the presence of God. And having the Ark of the Covenant with him was having the presence of God. But he knew where God needed to be. God needed to be first in this behalf. It didn't matter the circumstances that he had to face. He had to make sure that the ark, the presence of God, was placed first where it needed to be. Could I tell you here today, placing God first in your life, you will find the favor that he's looking down upon you. You will find his grace and mercy if you place him first in your life. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your sweet anointing. I pray that you would move upon our hearts and our minds here today. Anoint these lips of clay, Lord, that I might minister to the heart that's here today. Strengthen them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you lay your Bibles down and just give a clap praise unto the Lord before we go any further? Worship Him and magnify Him. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I magnify you. You're worthy to be praised. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. So, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As Jesus walked and began to walk with his disciples, he entered into a place one day. And no, mad, no doubt it was a, a Sunday service, we could call it. And they was there to give of their alms and give of their offerings and to make praises unto Jehovah and to magnify God. They was making their way into temple and 
And as they begin to give, we find the scribes and the Pharisees that were uh, of well-to-do maybe in giving uh, a little bit of their tenth and allowing God to, to have what they had to offer to Him. And, and uh, lo and behold, this little widow woman makes her way into the back door and finds her way in the line of giving to the Lord. And she didn't have much and she didn't have much to give and everything that she had was all in her pocketbook and that day and and she wasn't sure she was going to be able to go out to eat afterward and there was no potluck roast on the on the stove that day she didn't know where she was going to find anything to eat but all she knew is that all she could have she wanted to give to the Lord and so she made her way behind those Pharisees that day and she dropped those two mites into the barrel and then she walked away and began to worship and praise the Lord there was nobody paying any attention to her. She was all by herself doing her own little thing. But then somebody in the corner began to rib and poke at the disciples and say, hey, look, that one's given all that she's had. She's going to be blessed of the Lord. She's, I've got to touch her. And that was Jesus. As he began to move in that crowd and see what that little lady gave, he began to say, she give all that she she had. She gave more than they could ever want to give or ever desired to give. And his disciples looked, Jesus, but she just gave two mites. It's not in the two mites the Lord said that I'm looking for. It's in the sacrifice of praise. It's in being honorable to stand in my presence and to magnify the great name of God. It's placing me first into her life. And that's what Jesus seen. I can move. I look upon her with favorable uh, 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 conditions, excuse me, and I want to bless her because she's found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Could I tell you here today, you may not have much, but when you come and make and set aside time to be in the presence of the Lord and you're doing all you can to, to magnify the Lord and to worship Him, can I tell you today you're finding favor in the grace of God. God will bless. God will open doors. The the Lord will move and He will touch because you're given everything that you have. Some of us in this life uh, find it easy just to pay a little here and to pay a little there. And we forget that God needs to be first in our lives. Uh, sometimes we get caught up in the idolatry around the world today. Could I tell you, we need to reevaluate our situation and make sure that God is placed first inside of our lives. Have I taken care of my worship? Have I praised my God like I should? Have I lifted up the name of Jesus like I should? Do I love Him with my whole heart do i love him with all my mind hallelujah because i want to be able to find favor in the eyes of the lord Jesus always liked to start a story. The Bible would call it a parable. And a parable is just that. It's a little story. But I believe Jesus says uh, uh, somewhere, it's not quoted, it's not wit witnessed in the, in the books of the Gospels. Uh, but somehow i got to think uh, that the Lord said, really, I want this to happen. Uh, this is really what I'm looking for. This is really what I'm desiring. This is really what I want. Uh, there was a Pharisee that made his way to prayer uh, one hour. Uh, and as he entered in, he, he began begin to notice there was somebody on the other side of the sanctuary and, and he began to get all dignified and he began to praise the Lord with everything. Oh God, oh I have everything and I worship you. I thank you for gi giving me all blessings and, and honor, allowing me to do this and allow he was full of pride. He had everything going for him and he wanted to make sure everybody knew that he was a Christian. He wanted to make sure everybody knew that, that he was good and, and, and it he wanted to make sure everybody knew that God looked down upon him. But on the other side, Jesus said, was a little publican. And as he stood there, he began to cry unto the Lord. In fact, the Bible said, Jesus said he smote his breast and said, Oh Lord, oh, I am a sinner. Oh, if there is somewhere that you can just look upon me and forgive me. Oh, will you allow your glory to rest? I want to find favor in your sight. I don't want 
anybody to know without me. I don't care that, uh, uh, that they can see this or do that. I don't want my reward openly, Lord. I just need grace. I just need help. I just need you. Would you be first in my life? And Jesus said, that man in that hour has more blessing than the Pharisee or Sadducee that has great prayer, beautiful prayer. Hey, the eloquent speech has nothing to do with it, but this is the anguish of the heart that says and makes up in the mind, I'm going to place you first in my life. Somewhere in our lives, we got to get a hold of it and say, God, I want you first in my life. You're my God and I worship you because you're first in my life. It doesn't matter what comes my way. I'm still going to praise and magnify you. Would you give the Lord a hand praise right now? Hallelujah. As Jesus stood there with his disciples, maybe possibly taking a lunch break, and the crowd began to gather around, and uh, Jairus' father began to make his way to Jesus and began to plead. I know you can heal my daughter. She's sick. You've got to have compassion. You've got to make your way. And he began to make his way. There was somewhere on the outskirts of that crowd, a woman that came diseased with the issue of blood and seen Jesus and knew if I can somehow get to Jesus. You know, we need a fortitude that when we're in pain and we know who can help us, that Jesus can help us, we've got to make our way to where he's at. We've got to get ourselves to where he's at. I don't understand this dilemma of those that are hurting and in pain. They don't want to be in the presence of God. I've got to be in the presence of God. Oh, if my soul is afflicted, if my heart is afflicted, I've got to be in the presence of God. I've got to be in His house. I've got to be in His spirit. I've got to be moved by Him. I desire to be moved by Him. And as He began to make His way to Jarius, His house, there was something that happened the hem of his garment was grabbed he said virtue begin to flow and in the midst of all chaos in the midst of trying to do something else for somebody else somebody got their healing could I tell you here today that the Lord's no respecter of person as he's making a way to for somebody else he can touch your life also he can move upon you and bless. if you would only make him first in your life And so as he makes his way to Jairus' house, he begins to hear the cry of the the non-believers as they begin to weep and wail because Jairus is now dead. And there's no use to him even being there. They said Jesus steadily made his way to Jairus' house. He knew his purpose and reason. He wasn't relying upon them or what their belief was. He wasn't relying upon them. All he knew is that there was a father's love that knew that Jesus could heal his daughter. And he put Jesus first. I can only imagine Imagine that this Jairus grabbed the hold of the hand of Jesus and said, Don't you listen to them, Lord. I placed you, I've come to find you. I've come to drag you to my house because I want you in my realm. I want you in my house because you can do something in my life. Could I tell you if someone here today could just grab a hold of the hand of the Lord and not let go and say, God, I'm placing you first in my life. Oh, I'm making sure that you're there. I need you to move in my heart. I need you to move in my mind. And as Jairus grabs a hold of, now I'm paraphrasing here for a moment, of Jesus' hand, and they walk through the midst of the unbelief, and they begin to say, there's no reason, Jairus, for you to even believe in Jesus, because your daughter's already dead. And Jairus said, no, but I put my faith in Him. I know who He is. I've seen Him walk across the waters. I've seen Him heal the blinded eyes. I've seen Him unstop the deaf ears. And if He can do all of that, He can raise my little girl up from the dead. I'm believing in my God. I'm believing in Him. I'm going to put all my faith in Him. I'm putting Him first in my life. And so as Jairus opens the door and they make their way, the house is full of unbelief. Isn't it amazing that our world today is full of non-believers? 
trying to ridicule the church, trying to drag the church down. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to be in the presence of there is no God. And then they tried to redefine uh, oh, uh, the, the things that God has preciously given to us and, and try to say there's nothing to this history book that we believe is the word and the mighty acts of God. But could I tell you, just grab a hold of the hands of Jesus and say, Lord, I put you first in my life. I need you in my life. Walk in the doors of my heart. Oh, I need you to move upon my mind. I need you to heal my body. I need you to heal my spirit. And so as Jesus looked, he began to say, get the unbelievers out. Only those that were going to believe, I want them here. Only those. And then he began to find some favor in Jairus' house. And he said, just because of your faith, I'm going to raise your daughter. And she was brought back to life. Could I tell you here today, maybe you thought it was dead, dried, and plucked up. But God has found favor in you. You found favor in the eyes of the Lord. You placed him first and he's going to bless you. Because of your blessing. Hallelujah. Now the story starts way back in our text as David begins to make his way out of Jerusalem. He's on the run. It starts way back as Absalom had taken the life of a, 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 the elder son of David and David was in mourning and, and, he, and he couldn't understand uh, why Absalom would actually have to kill his, own, his oldest son that was uh, probably going to be the next king of Israel. Um, but yet he did and Absalom, because of, of turmoil in the family, Absalom took uh, the life of his elder brother uh, and then David had to take care of Absalom and he sent him away and began to, for years, the Bible would say, over two years, he couldn't even be in the sight of the king. He desired to be in the sight of the king. But somewhere, that deceit and lie in Absalom began to grow. That murder, he never got it taken care of. And he decided that he wanted to have the kingdom for himself. And so he began to uh, get into good graces of King David. And, and as David began to allow him to come back to Jerusalem, Absalom said, hey, I'm going to make my, my uh, calling and election sure. I, I found, uh, I'm going to get saved. Could I put it in our vernacular today? I found Jesus. I'm going to go and I'm going to make penance and I'm going to go to Hebron and, and I'm going to be able to, to repent and pour my heart out. I'm so sorry. And so David, feeling good about it, allowed Absalom to do that. And Absalom makes his hey, way to Hebron. The, the whole point was that Absalom had no desire to put God at first into his life. He desired only the things of his flesh. And so now he found a way to sow deceit and he found a group of individuals that said, hey, Absalom, I think you can be king. And so Absalom decided to say, I, I think I can be king. And he tried to take the kingship from King David. And so as he began to allow the numbers to build up in Hebron and, and he had all the cities of Jerusalem or of Israel with him and the several tribes backing him up. He had thousands of warriors. They began to descend down upon Jerusalem. And somehow David began to hear word that his own son had turned coat on him and decided that he wanted to take his place. And so David began, no doubt, began to cry and moan and wonder, what is it? What's going on? My own family turned coat upon me. Where am I going to go? And in that midst, he began to pray and he got himself up and he began to make decisions. I don't know where he got the strength to make such decisions, but he said, we've got to get out of Jerusalem. We've got to make way. We've got to get everybody out and so there they are making their way in all sudden chaos his own son deciding he's going to kill him and take his throne his own son that obliterated his family of the promise of lineage for the of time had come against him his own family was tossed to and fro he had friends that were devout friends priests that were devout priests that were uh, with him but now they were with Absalom and now that the enemy was coming in he had no place to go could I tell you here right now when things
things get chaotic within your life, when you don't know which way to turn, I pray that you put God first because then you will find favor and God will make a way for you. God will supply the need. God will open up the door and allow you to walk down avenues that you never thought were able to you. Oh, if you only allow the presence of God to minister to you in His special love. But David having a wonderful work with the Lord, knowing God and being a man after God's own heart, didn't worry. His heart was afflicted. Could I tell you the enemy will afflict your heart. He will come against you in any manner that he can come against you. Disease, sickness, family issues, things that that will come in like a flood. He will cast the stones at your house. He will try to ridicule and bring you down. But through it all, if you will just allow the Lord to direct your steps, allow the Lord to direct your heart and mind, you will find favor in the eyes of God. Does anybody want to have favor in the eyes of the Lord here today? Can you give a praise unto the Lord? Lord, I need favor in your eyes. I need you to move upon my heart in my mind it got so chaotic that one of his friends Zadok a priest of the temple surely David would want the ark of the covenant wherever David would go in fact it was David that would go and get the ark and bring it back to Jerusalem not by once but twice The first time we all know the story and David began to find and pull out the Old Testament laws and began to find a way to carry the presence of the Lord with him that he might be able to worship and magnify the Lord. Could I tell you we need to have the heart of David and know and realize how we can get the presence of the Lord in our lives. Because once you have the presence of the Lord in your life, He'll go wherever it is that you go. He'll lead you wherever it is you want Him to lead you. As long as you put God first in your life, His presence will follow you. And so this... The uh, priest decided, "May I know David's going to want the ark of God. In a time of stressful situations, um, David's going to want to be able to magnify and worship the Lord. Isn't that awesome? I think that's awesome uh, that his testimony would speak of him in the midst of hardships. I know that my king is going to magnify God. Oh, hallelujah. There are those children that are looking at their parents. There are parents that are looking at the grandparents. Uh, that are looking as they go through the valleys of the shadow of death, uh, as they're going through the hardships of time, uh, no matter what it is, uh, and and they know where they're going to go. They're going to worship the Lord. They're going to magnify the Lord. They're going to be faithful to His house. They're going to be faithful to His call. Why? Because they put God first in their life. And that's the way David was. And so this priest said, surely he would want the presence of God with him. And so they grabbed the Ark of the Covenant and they begin to bring it out of Jerusalem with them. And they begin to make their way with everybody else. We're going into hiding, but we got the Spirit of God with us. We've got the Ark of the Covenant with us. And then they got about halfway there and David looked back in his own agony, in his own pity. He looked back at the Ark of the Lord and he said, wait a minute, that's what where God needs to be. I made a house of God. I put it in Jerusalem. That's Zion. That's where God's supposed to be. God's got to be first in my life. I can't worry about about me. I've got to make sure God is in His house. I've got to make sure that God is worshipped by everybody. I've got to make sure I place Him first because I know if I put Him first in my life, He'll open up this door. I know if I put Him first in this life, He'll heal this sickness. I know if I put God first in my life, I know God will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. And so David stops in the midst of his run. In the midst of his, I don't have the answer that I'm looking for. I'm going through a rough trial right now, a rough patch right now. And I don't know what, how God's going to answer. In the midst of running from the enemy and nowhere to go, David stop. 
And he looks at his priest and he says, you take that back to Jerusalem. You put God back where he belongs because it doesn't matter what's happening in my life. It doesn't matter who's coming against me as long as I put the presence and the mercy and the glory of God first in my life. Then I'll be able to come back in his habitation and magnify him because he has brought me out of a mighty long way. He has stabled my feet. He has has allowed me my steps. He allowed me a long life. And then I will be able to worship and magnify the Lord in his house where he's at. Oh, hallelujah. Won't you give the Lord a hand praise right now? (laughs) Then will I find favor in the eyes of the Lord. I like when David, as he begins to place God first in his life... He has no place to go. And not too far along down uh, this passage of Scripture in verse 30, uh, we find after he sent the presence or the ark of God back to Jerusalem, uh, it's quoted as saying, David went up uh, by the ascent of Mount Olive uh, and wept as he went uh, and his head covered uh, and he went barefoot and all the people that was with him uh, covered every man his head uh, and they went up weeping uh, as they went up. Uh, Oh, it may be a sacrifice to put God up there first in your life. You may have to sacrifice some things in this life to make sure God is first in your life. One of them is putting Him first in His house. And another of them is allowing Him to move upon you in a special way that He can bless others. Sometimes things are going to happen that you'll have no answer to. But I'm still going to worship and magnify God. He's still first in my life. He's still my mighty God. I'm still going to live for Him. I'm still going to worship and magnify Him. Why? Because He's my God. And the enemy may come in and you may have a rough way of it and he may be throwing stones at you. Oh, I'm still going to worship God. I'm still going to magnify Him. He's first in my life. Nobody else is going to call me out and say that you're a Christian without me saying, yes, I'm blood bought. I'm sanctified through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, and I've got him first in my life. I will find favor in his eyes. They wept and they cried. No answer to prayer. Sometimes, maybe throughout life, you may feel that way. And then David saying... One of his has uh, uh, one of his advisors that was with Absalom. He has conspired with Absalom, and David said, "Oh Lord, I pray you." Turn the counsel of His into foolishness. If there's some way, Lord, that You can make a way and change this circumstance, would You just hear this only prayer? If I'm going to die in the wilderness, then I'm going to die worshiping You. If I'm going to die here, if this is the end of my kingdom, then I'm still going to magnify You. You're still my God. You're still my King of Kings. I'm still living for You. Oh, but if You would just hear one more prayer. Could I tell you that when you find favor in the eyes of the Lord, you're going to be able to have your prayers heard of Him. There's not a prayer that you have not prayed that God will attend unto. He knows exactly what the prayer is and He has exactly the answer in the time frame that He's desiring. All you got to do is labor in the Lord. Weep upon the Lord. Put Him first in your life and magnify Him and worship Him, you will find favor in the eyes of the Lord. Later, he would have a servant come up out of nowhere. Abishai. He found his way to David and there he stood with his garments ripped and barefooted and crying. And and David said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be with the ark of God. He said, oh king, I'll follow you anywhere. 
I'll be to you whatever it is you need to be. If you're born a, a, a vagabond and in poverty, then I'm a vagabond and in poverty. If you're going to die, I'm going to die with you. And then David's got this inkling idea. God moved upon him and said, why don't you send him back to Jerusalem? Allow him to be the ears and the eyes that you're going to need to be able to conquer the enemy like you need to conquer it. Could I tell you that the blessing of God in a prayer may be something that you'll never expected, but somehow stood on the perks of, of your prayer life and entered into the realm of your life and it will answer the prayer that you've been praying about. I don't know where God's coming with the miracle in your life, but I'm telling you there's an abyssi within your life and he'll get into the realms of the enemy's camp and he'll be the eyes and ears of God and he will be able to allow you to find favor in God and make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Could I tell you that after that he began to tell David everything that was going on in Absalom's camp and lo and behold just a few chapters later we find King David entering into Jerusalem, magnifying the Lord, worshiping Him and magnifying Him. Why? Because he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. He placed God first. Stand with me here today. He placed God first in His life. Somewhere in our lives today, we're going to have to make that decision Lord, I want you first, no matter what seems to come at me. I need you to intervene. Is God first in your life? I need you to move. Is God first in your life? Paul began to write to the Romans because the Roman church at that hour began to have some ridicule from the Jewish church that had received the gift of the Holy Ghost and and were baptized in Jesus' name. Telling them that they needed to be circumcised or else they could not be saved and And so the Roman church didn't understand exactly all the manner of the Jewish law was. Because the Jews at that hour didn't realize and understand that that was for them. That was not for the Gentile church. Jesus come to fulfill the law. It made something totally different. And Paul began to speak to them in Romans chapter 2, verse 29, and he began to speak to the Gentile listener, and he began to tell them in essence, uh, when you find yourself in the favor of the Spirit of God, uh, it doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile. Uh, It doesn't matter if you're circumcised or uncircumcised. Uh, It's when you place your faith into Him, uh, and you allow Him to move in your life, uh, then you're embodied uh, with His Spirit, uh, and He's consuming you. Uh, He's loving you. Uh, I'm here to tell you today, I don't know what the enemy has tried to tell you and sell you a bill of goods saying there's nothing of your spiritual birth. There's nothing about the divine move of the Holy Ghost. But I'm here to tell you today, there is something of your spiritual birth. There is a divine move of the Holy Ghost and you're in the presence of the very God that is giving that to you right now. If you would put Him first in your life, God, I commit to you my life. I'm putting you first in my life. I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to be faithful to your house. I'm going to be faithful to your call. I'm going to be faithful to knowing your word. I'm going to be faithful to giving to you of my finances as you bless me. I'm going to be faithful to you. When you put God first in your life, the things that you find are burdening you down, holding you back, and it seems like the enemy won't let go, you will find them opening up like a beautiful flower. I believe today in our midst, and I believe there are some that aren't here that need to be here in this, but you that are here today, if you just desire it in your heart, God, I want you first. I want to find favor in your sight. I wonder if there's any child of God here today that desires to find the favor of the Lord in your life. Would you close your eyes and lift your hands up right now? Would you allow Him to minister to you right now? Lord, I want to find favor in your sight. Lord, I desire to find favor in you, Lord. I need you to move. I need you to touch. I need you to bless, Lord. Maybe you haven't done this yet. Or maybe you need to reaffirm to the Lord today. Maybe He's tugging at your heart. Am I first in your life? 
Am, am I in Jerusalem? Is my ark in Jerusalem? Have you carried me to where I need to be in your life? We want, we want the supernatural things of God, but yet we don't want God in our lives first. Could I tell you, you want the supernatural in your life, then you've got to place the supernatural first in your life. You've got to have the need supplier first in your heart and mind. God, I want to give you. I'm committing to you, Lord, my everything, Lord. I'm putting you first. Come on, church. Can you pour your heart out to the Lord right now? Lord, I'm putting you first in my life. Lord, I desire to put you first in my heart and my mind. Lord, I need you, God. Oh, and be like David. After you put him first, it doesn't matter, Lord, what I got to go through. As long as you're first and then I find favor in you, you'll allow me to enter into your habitation once again to worship you and to magnify you. You'll grant me an opportunity. Could I tell you, friend of mine, every time we darken the doors of the house of God, we've got the opportunity that God has granted us to be in the presence and the mercy of God. That's why I desire to be in His presence because I want Him first in my life. Come on church, pour your heart out to the Lord right now. Magnify Him right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just to walk with Him means everything to me. Just to walk with Him means everything to me. Just to know He's near. His hand is leading me. I wonder if we could just lift our hands to the Lord and allow this sweet spirit of God to minister to our lives here today. Oh, Jesus, right now, minister, Lord. Oh, Lord, how I need you to move in Jesus' name. That's it, church. There's a beautiful move of the Holy Ghost. Enjoy the waves of the Holy Ghost right now. Let Him speak to you right now. Just to walk with Him means everything to me. That's it. Let Him heal your heart right now. Just give it to Him right now. Oh, Lord Jesus, I need to find your favor. Lord, I place you first. Lord, I put that ark back in Jerusalem. Oh, that I might find favor in your eyes, Lord. That's it, child of God. Speak to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You're in His throne room right now. Allow His Spirit to minister and to move. Oh, hallelujah. They're going to sing that again. And now you've prayed that prayer. I want you to begin to really cast your cares upon the Lord. It doesn't matter what's coming. I'm going to weep. I'm going to cry before you, God. I know you're going to hear my prayers. I know you're going to hear my heartbeat. I know you're going to hear me, Lord. I'm going to worship you. Come on, church. Why don't you worship the Lord with me? Why don't you magnify the Lord with me? Exalt Him in His house. Lift Him up in His house. Oh, He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, 
we thank you for your sweet spirit that we feel in this house today. Thank you, God, for your conviction. Thank you, God, for stirring our lives, our hearts, our minds. Lord, I pray your word would minister to the mind and the heart today. That you would move throughout this week. That you would minister, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, as we take the ark back to Jerusalem, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would move. Lord, that you would touch. Oh, that we would find that favor in your sight, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Teach Sunday school teachers, if I could meet with you five, ten minutes, I appreciate that. Make sure you welcome Sister Diane, Sister Mary, and Richard. And uh, make them feel welcome here. God bless them. And we'll see you all Wednesday evening for Bible study. God bless you. Don't forget, drive by prayer. Do your drive by prayer. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name.